Hello, I'm Mark Kepler, Purdue University Cooperative Extension Service, located right here in Rochester, Indiana. We thought we'd take out on this beautiful May day and take a look at some of the weeds we have in our yard and, our, and we deal with. Today I really want to talk about the different kind of weeds that we find in our lawn. And let's go backwards a little bit and let's talk about the types of weeds that we find because I think this is where it gets uh, very confusing for people. So let's talk about our grass that's in our lawn. We have things like bluegrass and ryegrass. Those are the type of grasses growing in our yard. Those are perennial grasses. They come up every year, they grow, they die down kinda in the fall of the year, then they come back in the spring of the year. They're perennials versus an annual grass. Good example of an annual grass is crabgrass. Crabgrass germinates in the spring, dies in the fall. And so every year we have to deal with crabgrass in our yard and that's an issue and we'll talk about that some other time. Today I want to talk to you about broadleaf weeds. So in the world of weeds there are grasses and there are broadleaves. We have a perennial grass growing out here, then we can have in our yard a perennial broadleaf or an annual broadleaf. And a good example of an annual broadleaf, something that germinates in the spring, dies in the fall would be something like ragweed for example. Generally not a problem in the grass but that's one of the things we have around the farms in our area we see a lot of ragweed, lamb's quarter, velvet leaf. These are all weeds that germinate in the spring and die in the fall and they are all annual weeds. In our lawn we have a different kind of an annual weed and the one I want to talk about specifically today is one called chickweed. Chickweed is an annual that germinates in the fall of the year and then dies in the spring. So we're here in the month of May and we're going to take a look at some chickweed. And this chickweed that we're looking at is stuff that germinated last fall, has grown all winter long, and now it is going to seed. And that's what it'll do right now is put itself to seed. And by the time we get into the month of June, it'll have gone to seed and it'll die down for the winter. That seed will lay there for the summer, germinate again next fall, and grow through the winter into next year. So let's take a look at this weed that we're dealing with, seeing a lot of it this year, called chickweed. Okay. Okay, we're in a lawn and we're going to talk and look at some of the weeds that are in this lawn and we're talking specifically about chickweed. So let's go down here and take a look at this. This kind of a off color, not quite green area, kind of a light colored green with something in it that is of a broadleaf nature is something we refer to as chickweed. And this is chickweed right here. And if you take a look at this chickweed, I told you it germinates in the fall and dies in the spring. It's already had its flowering going on and it's now going to seed. And this little spot right here is where the flower is and it's turning itself to seed is what it's doing. We see a lot of chickweed this year and the reason we're seeing so much chickweed is because, not because it's a great weed, but it's because we've got spots in our lawn that have died out. Chickweed comes along and just takes advantage of the situation. So it's not a great competitor. People will say, oh, this chickweed's taking over my yard. The reality is what's going on in your yard is your grass is dying out for some reason and the chickweed is taking advantage and coming up. In fact, most of our lawn weeds that we have, that's exactly what's going on is they're taking advantage of an open situation. The sunlight's coming down today, hitting this ground and germinating those weeds that'll come up in these empty spots. We'll talk some other time about crabgrass, but that's exactly what's going on. Right now, beautiful warm weather today, we're going to be having our crabgrass situation a little bit later on. And that's because we're taking advantage of these holes. So, chickweed is something that is here and in, in, uh, available in our yard. So people are asking me, what do I do about it? Well, some of the answers are, wait because it's going to go to seed and it's going to die here pretty quick. So maybe I don't want to get the chemicals out and start dealing with that part of it. So from a chemical standpoint, the absolute best time to use 
herbicides on your yard to control dandelions, chickweed, buckhorn, clovers is in the month of October. And that's what people have to start out thinking about is the month of October. Purdue's done experiments throughout the years and in their experimentation they have found that where they sprayed the exact same chemical every month of the year just by spraying it in October they get their absolute best control just by the right month not by changing the amount of herbicides in it but by putting it at the right time and so if we were out here in October this chickweed would have just started to germinate and this bare spot and started to come up we would have had this little tiny plant and when we sprayed it with herbicide it would have taken it out so what I'm getting at today is your control is not now it should have been last fall or in this case it ought to be next fall is when we need to be thinking about that if you can get yourself on a fall herbicide program you will do a tremendous advantage to your yard in doing that so that's what we're looking at. So let's take a look at some other weeds we might have out here in this, in this yard, and we'll talk about controlling them, and then we're gonna take a look at some chemicals we might use on those different weeds. Okay, so we talk about chickweed, which is the annual, but the number one perennial that anybody deals with in a lawn is gonna be a dandelion. And there's nothing better than that nice yellow color to your nice green lawn. Well, that is if you're kind of a purist, and most of us are not along that line of those types of purists. So if we look down here, I, I deal with a dandelion. They are starting to bloom this time of year. A dandelion is a perennial. It's here year after year after year. It doesn't, it germinates from seed maybe three, four years ago, and that's where the dandelion comes from. The other really important perennial that we see in our yard is one called buckhorn. That's the thing, it has the leaves that come out flat and then has that seed head that comes up. There's a couple different kinds of buckhorn, but we see them quite a bit. And then the other one we deal with, of course, is clover. And we have lots of different clover that potentially can come up in our yard. So what people, again, will say is the dandelions are taking over or the clover is taking over. And I'll use clover as a very good example. If we have a dry summer where the grass really doesn't do very well, in that dry summer, usually the year after a dry summer we'll have a lot of clover. And the reason we have a lot of clover is because it's came up in those spots where the grass has died out. So this is a great opportunity to talk to you about the specific things that you need to do for your lawn to make it vigorous rather than having to go to the chemicals and having to spray it all the time. Best thing you're going to do to this yard is you're going to fertilize it. And you're going to fertilize it in the month of September. And then you're going to follow that September fertilization with one in, in the month of November. About the first week of November ought to be about your last mowing of the year. If we fertilize in September, that fertilizer goes on, that nitrogen in that fertilizer goes on, and it will go into the roots of that plant, and that plant will develop deep, healthy roots. That's what we're trying to do in that September time period. It's coming into winter. The grass plant says, you know, I think it's gonna be winter out here. Let's go ahead and buckle down, get our nutrients into us, and develop for this winter time period. And so that's what it's gonna be doing at that time of year. So that's why fertilizing in September is essential. That is probably the best thing you're gonna to do to this grass. September followed by one in November. The absolute worst thing is to fertilize in the month of April. That's the old adage, people have thought that for years. Get out there, fertilize in April. But what you do when you fertilize in April is you actually stimulate the roots to give excessive growth to the top, pulling the nutrients out of the roots and putting them into top growth and actually making the plants sick. And that's something we want to stay away from. So that's why we do that fertilization in September and then followed by the one in November. Really important things to do to our plants. Number two, probably the next best thing you're going to do for your grass is mow it high. That means at two and a half to three inches tall. Set your deck, measure from the ground to the bottom of your deck, and make sure it's around two and a half to three inches. I prefer three inches if you set it at that height. The reason that the height makes a difference is when you cut too low, grass exists because sunlight. Grass has to have sunlight to exist. When you cut too low, you cut off way too much leaf surface, and it doesn't have that leaf surface to photosynthesize that sunlight to put energy into that plant. 
So that's what we're doing when we do this, these, these grasses. By mowing high, we got more leaf surface, and that more leaf surface will energize our roots. So that's two things that you can do for your lawn. One of them is really cheap, and that's mowing high. The other one costs a little bit of money. The third thing is, when we get into the health of the grass, is to water it when we have an extremely dry period for a long period of time. And it doesn't mean you have to water it till it's green every week or several times a week. It just means that you keep it alive. So it hasn't rained for two, maybe three weeks. Let's go out there and put a half of inch of water on it. That keeps my grass alive, and that's really all I'm after. So those are cultural things that really you ought to be considering. So now, let's stop and talk about the chemical aspect of things. What are we going to do chemically to control the dandelions, the buckhorn, the clover, and some of the other broadleaf weeds that are growing in our perennial grass we call our lawn? So let's take a look at the chemical opportunities that we can utilize to kill these weeds in our yard. And again, remember I'm talking about the broadleaf weeds that we're dealing with. So let's say it is the month of October and it's starting to cool down. Let's say even it had a frost last night. If there was a frost last night, that weed is actually going to even devote more energy uh, going into its roots, which means it's even more susceptible to being killed by this herbicide. So I stopped by the store today and I picked up a type of herbicide. This one happens to be one that, we, that has the name on it, Spectricide and Weed Spot for Lawns. There are all sorts of companies out here that produce herbicides for our yard and we use in our yard. But in general, all these companies have a combination of three different ingredients for the most part that are utilized for weed control. If you take a look at the real fine print on this label, that fine print will list those three different ingredients. One of them is a big chemical name that we call 2,4-D. Another one is another big chemical name we call MCPP. And the last one is one called dicamba. Dicamba is very effective, but we have to watch it. If we use a lot of it, it'll drift and it'll get to our flowers and it'll get to other places we don't want it to get to. Which is also why the month of October works really nice because then if we have any kind of drift, most of our plants have already died down or started that process of dying down for the winter. And we're not going to have as many drift issues, but we can still have some drift issues. So what you got to watch for on these chemicals, like this one, for example, is Spectricide. Spectricide is a company name. And so people say, well, go buy some Spectricide. That's just like me being told to go, I'm um, asking about wanting to buy some crackers, go buy Nabisco. Well, it doesn't tell me what kind of cracker we're dealing with here. It just means they make crackers. So Spectricide is one of those things. It's usually the word, the label right below it, Weed Stop, which is also another word that this company uses. They've got a lot of Weed Stop products for lawns. It's really important that you get down and you read that lower label down there, that ingredient label, to know what we're really dealing with. So. There's a, uh, Ortho makes a product, Weed Be Gone for Lawns, that has some of these products, but there are other Weed Be Gone products too out there, so you have to watch that. A company called Trimec also makes company products for lawns. It has generally these three ingredients in it also. But these are the three ingredients that really do your best job on lawn weed control. So find a product that has that on there. Now this one is a spot spray. So this is one that maybe I would use in the spring of the year if I've got some dandelions that have popped up in my yard and I want to just go out and do a couple little spots here and there, this is all right to use. But if it was in the fall of the year, I would get a concentrated product that I mix with water and I spray the entire yard with it. And that way I would get not only the dandelions, the clovers, but that brand new chickweed that I might not even see out there, I would get a chance to kill it at a very, very young age. So always watch these labels. If, there is, if there's mass confusing in my job, it is understanding the labels of these herbicides. And people don't have a tendency to read them and you really need to read them. Well, how many days do I have to wait after I spray them before I mow it? Or does it matter if it rains tonight? All these kind of questions are answered by the label and they all make a difference. 
If I was to spray this right now, it was going to rain a couple hours from now, this would not be as effective. There are other herbicides that I can use for other types of things that farmers use in many situations. I can spray now and an hour from now. If it rained, I'd be all right. But you've got to read what's on the label. And with these products, what you end up doing is opening that up and reading the label behind it. Here's another one that I've brought along today that's also a herbicide that I can use on my yard. As we look at the fine print on this label, it has a different ingredient in it. It's one called triclopyr. And triclopyr is not the same as those three other ones that I was just talking about earlier. Triclopyr is another herbicide that works very effective and it works very effective on chickweed and oxalis, which is a clover looking weed, but not clover in our yard. And another one we call ground ivy. Ground ivy is a purple flowering weed that has runners like strawberries and it creeps across our yard. Some people call it creeping Charlie. And that's a really good explanation for it because it creeps across our yard and it grows really good all winter long. And so again, spraying in October with this product is very effective. And sometimes for best control, you have to spray maybe the early part of October, wait two weeks and spray again to get that. But let's look at this label again, take a look at it. Ortho, so that's just the brand name, Weed Be Gone. <clears throat> Ortho has hordes of different kind of Weed Be Gone products out there. So you gotta look further down the line and it says chickweed, clover, and oxalis killer. And so it's a chemical that's very effective on those things. If we read into the label there, we're gonna see that it'll work very, very effective on those products. Now, if I told you to go out and get a product called Triclopyr, and you were to go out on the market and look, you will also find that Ortho has a poison ivy control that has Triclopyr in it. And so the kind of directions they'll give you on that label for that poison ivy control are not the kind of directions you need for controlling chickweed and clover in our yard. So it makes a big difference with these products that are out there as to what it says and what it controls and what we need to do. This is why my office, the Purdue Extension Service, is available to you and I'm available to you to talk about these different chemicals that we have out there. And so if you go out and you want to do some spraying, some spot spraying, and you're not quite sure what to do, I'll help you out. My office is at the fairgrounds, the Purdue Cooperative Extension Service in Rochester, Indiana. Our phone number is 223-3397. Hopefully you can get a little bit more information on these things and we can talk to you and help you out.